Hey guys, Haley Lane, aka Key Black here. I've got another episode of Off the Cuff to talk about, uh, this time the director from Behind the Curtain. Uh, you know, his character design, the early inspiration, the kind of evolution of his character over the course of the project. I'm gonna kind of tiptoe around some spoilers here. I'm gonna really only be talking about what you see in Behind the Curtain and in that little teaser at the very end of the video. So, I guess to start off, who is the director? Um, well, first off, you guys may have already noticed that the voice lines in the teaser uh, very closely mirror the opening lines of Welcome Home. That is absolutely an intentional parallel. Um, I saw in the comments that some people were referencing what I remember is an early, early theory back when Bendy and the Ink Machine was still coming out that the Ink Demon might have actually been Joey Drew. That's, that's not what's happening here. The, the Little Demon is definitely his own character. Um, that being said, I'll put it this way. If, if dad number one left for milk 30 years ago, who's the one who was left to raise the kids? You know, there's a reason that the little demon's personality and even his gestures, you might've noticed the similar finger wag between him and the director, uh, mirrors so closely the one who was left in the studio to take care of him and basically continue to develop him after Henry left. I mentioned previously that I did design the director back in like 2017 when I was doing the Toon Henry AU stuff. He was originally very, very manipulative, very saccharine, sickly, sweet. Otherwise though, he was kind of manic and inconsistent. I'm not really a writer, you know? When I started doing the Toon Henry AU, I definitely had a scenario in mind, but I didn't really know how it was gonna end. I had no idea how this situation of Henry coming back to his old studio would turn out. If you followed me back then, that's why there was never an ending to those comics. It was all just situational, like, oh, okay, well, this might happen in this kind of scenario, and so might that. But when Jess entered the project behind the curtain with me, um, she's an actual published author and a very experienced writer. We started talking about behind the curtain story, and in, like, a single day, not only had she revised basically the very rough outline of the story that I had pitched, um, but she'd also basically come up with the full ending and full resolution of the main conflict, even beyond Behind the Curtain's story, practically on the spot. And so at that point, it was basically just a matter of adjusting and polishing the music and the board to suit the new depth added to the characters and new depth added to the interactions and basically the new uh, meaning of the story. Jess has described the director's character as a cross between Walt Disney and Cave Johnson with a bit of Max Fleischer, Max Bialystok, Max Lord, and Maxwell Smart in there. It's like this unholy fusion of four Maxes and the other two um, with this micromanaging streak that would basically drive any employee up the wall, especially someone like Henry. I had never really worked on a character like that before. Most attempts that I had made to write him, as I said, it, it, was, it was pretty inconsistent and more often than not more like pathetic and, and a little bit pitiful uh, as a villain motivation. Um, but as Jess explains in her Substack article, the character of the director in Behind the Curtain is a very business savvy man who he feels jilted because the company that he perceives as having basically directed this entire time has met success due to the invention of his colleague, not from himself. So there's a, there's a decent amount of jealousy there, and it's ironic considering Henry's quite resentful as well because that's a lot of work to carry on his own shoulders. Um, so what's revealed in the flashback sequence had to have just the right tone to convey what kind of man this guy was. So that entire flashback sequence actually went through several versions, you know, some changes major, some pretty, pretty minor. Um, I don't remember all the specifics of the conversations that we had about them, but I do remember that Monpian and Jess basically ended up giving psych analyses of the characters. Um, the fight that I had originally drawn between Max Bialystok and the angrier Leo Bloom was more of a shouting match than it was an actual fight, and so it didn't really have that extra oomph to kind of nail in the coffin, this is it, they're never talking to each other again. Um, so when Jess and Monpian reviewed it, they gave me two key pieces of feedback. The first was that Monpian noted that a Max Bialystok, um, if you guys haven't seen Producers, you totally should. It's, a, it's an accurate comparison and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it since she made it the other day. <laughs> um, a Max Bialystok is gonna be the type to be actively involved in everything that goes on in his studio. He's gonna be up and around, he's gonna be pacing. He's not gonna be seated behind his desk like a Bond villain, which is what I had originally drawn. Um, then Jess noted that what was missing from their fight was that touch of Henry's temper. Um, 
And so when she said, and then he grabs him by the collar, I went, oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> so basically, that's what, uh, that's what allowed for the director, you know, let's just stick with calling him Max. That's basically what allowed for Max to react and to double down and basically demonstrate that Henry's not the kind of guy at that time who's willing to back up his threats. And that's why when Henry walks out the door, there's this feeling of something went very wrong there. And it wasn't just that they had a fight, it's that that fight didn't end the right way. Um, and so that's what sets up the rest of the story and the rest of the expectations for it. Is Henry gonna do the right thing now? Uh, I think I'll end this one by mentioning just the other day uh, when we were discussing the topic of this video, Jess sent me a 45 minute long video compilation of Cave Johnson quotes and I watched it three times in a row preparing for this video. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching. Um, again, just as always, if you have any questions whatsoever about behind the curtain, about any other project, uh, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. I'm curious to know what you're curious about. And yeah, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.